received as many as the Vatican will say content. To the contrary, not content. The contents have it. After Clause 4, Amendment 1, Baroness Lister, refer to such. My Lords, I rise to remove Amendment 1. I'm grateful to my fellow signatories, to Biot citizens and Chagossian voices for their assistance, to the APPG on the Chagos Islands, of which I'm a member, and to all those in committee, who in committee supported a similar amendment from across the House. The breadth and strength of that support reflected the recognition that this amendment is about rectifying a long-standing injustice in citizenship law, just as earlier welcome clauses in this bill do. The injustice that this amendment addresses concerns the descendants of Chagossians who were all evicted from their homeland by the British government to make way for a US air base back in the 1960s and early 70s, and who remain exiled. Those descendants are now denied the right to register as citizens that they would have had were they still resident in their homeland. The reason they are denied that right is because they are no longer so resident, but that is because they have been exiled from that homeland by the British government. This amendment would simply end the appalling injustice, as Conservative MP Henry Smith put it, in order to allay government concerns about the open-ended nature of his Commons Amendment, which would receive considerable support, this one applies a five-year time limit for registration. The consequences of the injustice include broken families, divided communities, insecurity for those living uh, here who are undocumented, hardship, and the aggravation of the trauma associated with exile. To give one example provided to me by Chagossian Voices, S, born in Mauritius, is the son of a Chagossian who is British by descent and is now in exile in Crawley. S has lived in the UK since the age of eight. When he turned 18, his mother used her meagre savings from her job as a cleaner to apply for his British citizenship. This was rejected but he was then granted a limited visa, which has now expired. She cannot afford to reapply and fears that her son could be deported at any time. I'm terrified of my family being split up, she says. My Lords, this cannot be right. What this means to Shagossians has been made painfully clear in the emails I've received following committee, and I think too to the noble lady, the minister, who very kindly met with some of us, including Rosie Levesque uh, of Biot Citizens last week. In committee, the minister expressed her sympathy and empathy, and I believe she genuinely understands what is at stake here. But that has not yet been translated into the action that is needed to remedy this injustice. Instead, she pointed to how some second-generation Stugossians would benefit from the earlier clauses in this bill that address discrimination in nationality law. But when questioned, neither she nor her officials could say how many that would be. I suspect not many. She's also spoken about how the government is looking at what more can be done to help Chagossian families seeking to settle here. But we've been given no details of what that might mean. And in any case, once again, it's to ignore the importance of citizenship, a theme running through many of our debates in committee. She also talked about a willingness to consider how the 40 a million pound fund set up to support Chagossians settled in the UK might be used. But my Lords, that fund was announced over five years ago, and to date I understand that only £800,000 had been spent. Certainly some of the fund could be used to defray any costs associated with this amendment, but it is no substitute for it. So we come to the nub of the matter. In committee, the Minister re reiterated the Government's concern that the amendment would be contrary to long-standing government policy and warned that it goes further than the rights available to many other descendants of British nationals settled elsewhere around the world. But how many of those other descendants are settled elsewhere because they have been forcibly exiled by the British government? None, I would suggest, my Lords. As a junior minister in the Commons acknowledged, the Shagossians' case is unique. Yet the government appears terrified that to concede on this amendment would create a precedent despite there being no other group in this situation. 
Why cannot they follow the advice of the noble Baroness Lady Faulkner of Margravine, who in committee suggested that the Minister simply needs to make it clear in her response today, although it may not be her response, it may be his response, uh, the Minister, that, that to quote, he does not intend this act, a humanitarian act, to set a precedent, a humanitarian act. My Lords, in conclusion, no one knows for sure how many Shagossians would avail themselves of the right contained in this amendment. But the best estimate, based on a census carried out by Biot citizens, is no more than a thousand. That said, this is not a question of numbers, but of finally putting right what everyone accepts is an injustice. I hope we will take the opportunity provided by this bill to end this injustice. Thus, if the Minister does not accept the new clause or offer to come back with an alternative at third reading, I will wish to test the opinion of the House. I beg to move. Yeah. Yeah. Amendment proposed after clause four, insert the new clause printed on the Marshall's list. Lords, as a vice chair of the All Party Group on Chagos, I just want to add one very brief point to the amendment so persuasively moved by my noble friend, which is, if, if resettlement had taken place following the High Court ruling of November 2000, that the ordinance banning their return was unlawful, it would much have reduced the need for an immigration route to the UK. Her Majesty's Government should lift that ban immediately, in addition to accepting the amendment moved by my, my, my noble friend. The recent Mauritian expedition has helpfully shown that there is no reason why the Chagossians should not return to their homeland. Some will probably want to do that rather than come to the UK, which would much diminish the apparent problem which the, the government has. As a judge sat in one appeal on the Chagossians and learned about the disgraceful behaviour of successive governments, mm -hmm. of all mm -hmm. political views, not, I have to say, the Lib Dems, because they weren't in power. But certainly <laughs> the Conservatives and Labour have each left the Chagossians to their fate. And one appalling thing that they did was to take an agreement from them, whereby they signed away their rights for some paltry sum, like £1,500. It is time that at least some of these Chagossians got some rights. And as indeed the noble lady who has put forward this amendment has pointed out, this is unique. And being unique, the government really should be generous and understanding and do something to repair the appalling gov damage of this government as well as that government for what has happened in the past. Mm -hmm. My Lords. Um I recognise that the bill uh, removes discrimination against those, including some descendants of Chagossians, unable to claim previously through their mothers or unmarried fathers. But we are talking in this amendment about a limited number of people in the hundreds, maybe 800 to 1,000, who will still have no right, even on, with part one of this bill, as descendants of Chagossians evicted from the island. Uh, to, to British overseas citizenship and, in due course, British citizenship. Even though, if they had not been evicted, those descendants would have had that right. So, in, when in committee, the Minister's only answer was that offering this right is contrary to long-standing government policy. That position does not take into account the exceptional nature of what happened to the Jagossians. No other British Overseas Territory citizens suffered this fate. Chucking out colonial subjects in the modern age was also, I hope, contrary to good government policy. So if an exception could be made for the Chagossians then, an exception can be made now. There did seem to be at uh, committee stage, some representation from people, noble lords here in, in your Lordship's house, who didn't actually know about the plight of Chagos Islanders. They were hearing about it for the first time. And there is so much injustice of the world, of course, it is very, very difficult to keep track 
of all the consequences of British and American imperialism. imperialism. But of course, it's one of the beauties of your Lordship's House that any of us can put down amendments which can be debated and, and discussed. And a big thank you to the noble lady, Lady Lister, for debating the issue and for her powerful speeches on this course. And so, having had the issue raised at committee stage and now again at report, no one can claim ignorance of this real injustice. So we have to take action. It's time for the U United Kingdom to make reparations for forcing changes for the, for the Chagos Islanders from that, um, f from, for the uh, Chagos Islanders. This amendment is the beginning of that process and the Greens support it completely. My Lords, I commend the Government that this bill seeks to remedy some long-standing injustices and discrimination in British nationality law. That is why I am so sad that there has been a refusal to accept this amendment so far. The Chagossians are the only category of British overseas territory citizens who were expelled and excluded from the British territory in which they lived by the British government itself in modern times. I commend the Biot Citizens Group, I commend the noble lady Baroness Lister, uh, and our honourable friend Henry Smith in the other place, who called this an appalling injustice. He is right. My Lords, this is, as others have said, a unique case. It sets no precedent. But unfortunately, the government seems to be relying on the cause of the injustice to refuse to remedy the same injustice. And could I ask my noble friend, who I know is sympathetic and has uh, empathy with um, the situation that these good people find themselves in, to ask in the response to explain why the government is refusing, without simply saying this sets a precedent, because clearly it does not. There is no other group in this situation, or if there is, could they enlighten us as to who that group might be? Knowing that this situation arose as a result of Britain wanting to support the United States in the Cold War. And at this particular time, as we face global perils, action this day would be a timely opportunity to remedy this injustice. It is enormous as an injustice in terms of the Chagossians' lives, but so tiny in the scope of this bill, and would show the world that we do recognise our responsibilities to people we have wronged in the past. This amendment is wholly reasonable. The noble Lady Baroness Lister has tried again and again to change the wording to include stricter time limits to accommodate the government's concern and reach some kind of compromise. So I do hope that my, friend will, my noble friend will either be able to accept this or commit to coming back with the government's own amendment at third reading. Otherwise, I have to tell the House that I shall, in good conscience, be voting in favour of this important amendment. I right. to strongly support this amendment to which I've added my name. I must declare in interest as a vice chairman of the Chagos Islands All Party Parliamentary Group. Can I ask the noble Lord the Minister how the government has the neck to condemn others for far less, while at the same time standing condemned by both the International Criminal Court and the General Committee of the U United Nations for refusing to allow the Chagos Islanders and their descendants citizen rights to return to their homeland. 
despite promises that they would be allowed to do so after 30 years. My lords, I remember as long ago as 2013 reading out a letter from a Pentagon minister to the then Foreign and Commonwealth Office minister saying that the Pentagon had no rejection to the return of the islanders to Diego Garcia being used to having indigenous people living alongside island military bases in the Pacific. I must correct Baroness Butler's loss in one regard in her speech. In fact, of course, the Lib Dems could have done something about it when they were part of the coalition government. I'm afraid, I'm not particularly pointing out the Lib Dems, but I'm afraid we are all guilty of the shame of what has happened to the Chagos Islands. All three parties, I'm afraid, have done nothing to deal with the dreadful situation in which they find themselves as a result of successive governments of all parties. And I do hope, therefore, that my noble friend can, he's having a hard time today, by the way, if he's got to answer this one as well as previous questions, I really do feel sorry for him. But nonetheless, I do feel, hope that he can offer us some, some uh, hope in this matter today, because the fact of the matter is that this, the, he, he, his, his noble friend, the Minister Baroness William, explained at the previous occasion when we discussed this that, of course, the problem was that what we're asking for does run counter to long-standing government policy in this regard. But the truth is that we ourselves created this situation, and surely long-standing policy should be flexible enough to deal with a problem which we ourselves created. And the fact is, there is no other group of people other than the Chargossians in this situation. And that is why I think we have to be flexible in this matter. And I know that the noble Lord Baroness uh, uh, Lister has looked again at this amendment and drawn it ever more tightly round it, uh, uh, the issue, so that we, there can be no additional problems or, or fewer additional problems arising from, from that. And I do commend her uh, on that effort. Could I make just one final point as well? We know from events like the Windrush scandal that issues like this are not just a matter of law, but of how individual cases are handled in the, in the Home Office administration. I don't criticise that administration because I know from my own experience as a Member of Parliament how difficult the cases may be sometimes to deal with, uh, and I do sympathise very often with the decisions they have to make. But what I would like to see is the Chagossian community given some particular access to government. Perhaps there should be an officer allocated to dealing with particular problems on a regular basis so there's a point of contact for them in the Home Office which they can go to as a matter of course. I have found from my own ex previous experience as a member of Parliament this can make a huge difference to people who are simply want very often to get into contact with people in an easy and a friendly way who understands their problems because they have been long versed in them. So I hope my noble friend, when he comes to reply, can give us some succour on this administrative issue as well as on the legal matter. I have to say to him also, this is not an issue which is going to go away. Um, I'd like to first of all refer to my interest in the register. Um, my Lords, I think in the time we stand now, this would be absolutely the right thing to do just to demonstrate UK leadership. And I think when it comes to long-standing government policy, we're a democracy where we should evolve and policies evolve with it. The people deserve, the people deserve our support to be given their right to go back to their homes and if we're going to have any standing in the world, let's take that leadership today. My lords, uh, I'm sorry. 
I think this is a very unique situation. These islanders were forced out of their homes for no objection to them, but in order to facilitate the development of bases uh, if necessary and desirable, desirable perhaps rather than necessary, in war. They did nothing wrong, and they haven't done anything wrong. And they would be entitled, if they were still there at this level, uh, to have the um, citizenship which uh, the Act gave them. The only reason that it, they're denied is because they are not now living where, if they'd been left at home, they would be. And that doesn't seem to me to be something that uh, in any way uh, can be imputed to their blame or imputed against them in desiring to get what they would have otherwise had. And so far as I'm concerned, uh, I want to understand what this long-term government policy is, that people have been damaged by activities of that kind, it shouldn't be recompensed. Is that the government policy or is it some other? Unless and until this extended government policy is explained, I think it's very hard to see what sort of policy that's worthy of that name could be applied to refuse this particular situation. My lords, it's very difficult for those of us who are old enough to carry responsibility for what the government did. But it is more difficult still to carry responsibility for what the government is now apparently refusing to do. And if there's anything wrong with the drafting of this amendment, and I must say I'm not conscious of it, but it may be pointed out, if it is, I can see no reason why the government shouldn't extend this until third reading and correct any mistake that's made in this particular amendment. As I say, I don't see anything wrong with it at the moment, but I'm always subject to being corrected uh, and therefore, I leave that open for my uh, uh, noble friend, uh, the minister, to deal with. But the real essence of it is that these people were put out of their homes for reasons which had nothing to do with any deficiency or damage or ill-considered uh, uh, action on their part. Nobody has suggested that they did anything wrong. And so far as I'm concerned, I find it very difficult to see why they shouldn't get the benefit of what they would have had if they hadn't been wrong. My, my lords, I rise very briefly to say a few words in tribute to one of the most remarkable parliamentarians I have ever known and one of the best friends I've had in my time in Westminster. And that is the late, great Tam D.L because he was on to this before anybody. He campaigned publicly and in the House of Commons, and uh, if he's looking down upon your Lordship's house as we debate this afternoon, I think that he would have a thrill of satisfaction having heard the speeches that we have just heard, and particularly that of my noble and learned friend, Lord Mackay of Clash Fern. My lords, it is never too late to put a wrong right. It is never too late to offer justice to those to whom it has been denied. And it is incumbent upon any government that values its own self-respect to put this wrong right and if my noble friend, and I do sympathise with him, I had to hear, hear his other answers from the bar of the House, but I do sympathise with him. He's drawn not one, but two short straws today. 
but, and, and he is a new minister. But he will earn enormous credit from your Lordship's house if he's able to get up and to say, yes, this is an overwhelming moral argument. Yes, I accept the justice of it. Yes, I will take it away, talk to my ministerial colleagues and come back with something satisfactory, although this is satisfactory in my view, come back with something satisfactory at third reading. I know if he does that, the noble lady who moved this will be satisfied. She's indicating that she would. But if he can't do that, then I hope she will divide the house and I'll be with her. Um, I hold my hands up. I'm one of those that Baroness Jones and Molson mentioned earlier. Didn't know much about this before we started this debate, but I've followed it. Uh, and I give real tribute to Baroness Lister for the way she has led this through. It is quite clear that it's completely unjust and this needs to be dealt with. I hope the Minister has noted that whilst in later debates, many of us around this House and Lord Horham will not agree, we do agree on this one completely, 100%. There seems to me no justification for anything other than accepting this amendment. My Lords, to assist the House to move swiftly to votes, we on these benches will try to restrict ourselves to one speaker who will speak for us all, unless we're provoked by subsequent <laughs> contributions. And I have to say to the Noble Lord, Lord Cormac, ra it's rather unfair to the Noble Lord, the Minister, particularly as he is a new Minister, asking him to deviate from his script. Um, but we agree uh, with my noble friend, Baroness uh, Ludford, and with all other Noble Lords. Lords, um, my noble friend Baroness Lister of Berterset has set out the uh, background to and purpose of this amendment and as we know currently uh, only those born on the islands and the first generation born in exile have the right to British overseas territory citizenship and therefore to British citizenship and as a result of this families have been broken up and communities divided as some members have access to citizenship rights whilst others do not. And in the Commons, as has already been uh, commented on, the Government accepted on the 4th of November last year during the committee stage on the Bill that the Chagossians present a unique case. However, by report stage the following month, the Government seemed to have decided that the Chagossians were no longer a unique case because going down the road proposed, quote, would undermine a long-standing principle of British nationality law under which nationality or entitlement to nationality is not passed on to the second and subsequent generations born and settled outside the UK and its territories." Close quote. But the reason the small numbers of Shagossians in question do not meet this condition is because they are descended from people who were evicted against their will from a British overseas territory. That's why they are unique, as the government have already conceded. They did not leave of their own free will to settle elsewhere. They were kicked out, forcibly evicted. There'd be no precedent set by agreeing to this amendment. And in effect, the government are using in support of their case to deny these Chagossians the right to British citizenship, the cause of the very injustice which this amendment seeks to address. We support this amendment, and it would appear we are far from the only ones in this House. Well, my lords, I thank all noble lords who've spoken this, in this debate, and I also thank the noble um, lady, um, Baroness Lister, for meeting with my noble friend, um, Baroness Williams, last week, and for the opportunity to hear further about the issues impacting uh, the Chagossian community. Um, as has been said previously, both in committee and when Bar Baroness Williams met with the noble lady last week, and as noted by my noble friend, Baroness Altman, um, the government does empathise and sympathise with the Chagossians and about how they were treated in the 1960s and the 1970s. It, it, it is, however, important to clarify who this amendment seeks to assist. It is not those Chagossians who were of the generations born on the British Indian Ocean Territory, as they've always been British nationals and have been automatically considered both British overseas territory citizens and British citizens since 2002. Similarly, it is not their children, the first generation of Chagossians born outside of British territory, who are also both automatically British overseas territory citizens and British citizens. 
It is also not those in the first generation of Chagossians born outside of British territory who the Chagossian community highlights have missed out on rights to British nationality due to historical legislative unfairness, and this bill seeks to rectify that issue. So this amendment is limited to those in the second and successive generations of Chagossians born outside of British territory, who like all British children, sorry, who like all children of British nationals by descent face a different route to British nationality. For this generation, if they wish to acquire British nationality, it is right that they must establish a close and continuing connection with either the UK or a British overseas territory by lawfully residing and settling there, although I recognise that since the 1970s it has not been possible to establish such a link to the British Indian Ocean Territory. This must be in line with either the UK's or an overseas territory's immigration rules. And that's also been the case with the Hong Kong British nationals overseas who do not have a right of abode in British territory and must complete a period of residence in the UK before acquiring the permanent residence status that is required in order to naturalise as a British citizen. So the points raised by the descendants of Chagossians, who are members of the second generation born outside British territory and who are now seeking to settle in the UK under the immigration rules, <coughs> excuse me, are often very complex. As the Minister for uh, Safe and Legal Migration has stated in the House of Commons, the Home Office is keen to consider what more we could do to support those families seeking to settle here under the current system. The Home Office is actively engaging with the Jagossian community to identify practical proposals that would support the second generation born outside British territory in navigating the system. In addition, the Home Office is discussing with the FCDO how the £40 million Chagos Support Fund, referenced by the noble lady Baroness Lister, um, could be used to deliver further support for Chagossians seeking to settle here under the immigration rules. And those discussions are current and ongoing, and I had some this morning. My Lords, as the Government has consistently stated, allowing entitlements to sit... Sorry. I'm so sorry, and I thank my noble friend. Could I just ask him to confirm for the House that... Had the grandparents of these individuals not been expelled against their will from their um, uh, islands, that these people would now be entitled to the citizenship that we're currently denying them? Um, well, I think I've already answered that question. Um, it, it is to do with the generations born outside British territory. So, yes. Um, uh, where was I? My Lords, as the Government has consistently stated, um, allowing entitlements to citizenship to be passed on beyond the first generation born outside the British territory, bypassing requirements to reside and settle here by those who do not have a continuing connection with the UK, would unfortunately undermine a key principle in British nationality law that applies to all other descendants of British nationals born abroad. Now, I recognise that the Noble Ladies' Amendment has sought to limit the right to register uh, as a British national to current generations who must apply within a limited time frame. However, this does not alleviate the Government's concern that offering this right is contrary to long-standing Government policy and goes much further than the rights available to, available to many other descendants of British nationals settled elsewhere around the world today. Now, can I finish by saying I have listened very carefully to this debate. I realise I'm something of a lone voice. Oh, I'm sorry. The Noble Lord, the Minister. But could I just ask him to deal with the unique position? There is, as far as we know, no other group of people who've been evicted as these have and have not been allowed to go back. They're in a special position, but you are not actually even dealing with that point. I deal with it by extension, which, as I say, I think it's, it's because it seeks to... Um, it would, it would be contrary to uh, long-standing government policy to even uh, deal with that. Um, I have listened very carefully to this debate. Um, um, I've taken on board what the Right Reverend Prelate, the Bishop of Durham, has said about broad agreement. Of course I have. Um, and I will take it back to the Home Office. I will also take my noble friend Lord Horham's suge suggestion back to the Home Office about dedicated support within the department, which strikes me as a very sensible suggestion. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to earn no credit with my noble friend, Lord Cormac, because I invite the noble lords to withdraw their amendment. I thank all the noble lords who've spoken. I think it's unusual to actually probably have more support from the government benches than from any other bench, uh, and very strong support it's been. Uh, and the two interventions really put their finger on, I'm afraid, uh, and <laughs> the, the poor noble lord is uh, making a face, 
um, that did not address the fact that this is a unique case, and as the noble baroness Lady Schloss said, and as the noble baroness Lady Altman said, if their, their grandparents had not been evicted forcibly yeah. and kept in exile, they, these people would probably still be living on the Chagos Islands and would be entitled to British yeah. citizenship. And it is citizenship that they want. Yeah. Certainly the Chagossians who've been in touch with me are desperate to be seen as citizens, not to come through some sort of, by, sort of intricate way of dealing with the, the immigration laws. That is not what they're seeking. So I'm sorry that the noble lord has not addressed the key issues here. Um, it, the the disgraceful behaviour is what the noble baroness Lady Schloss, uh, Butler Schloss described successive governments. As the, the noble lord, Lord Horan said, we all, in terms of our political parties, or that's not the Green Party, but all the other parties, have responsibility here. And this is our opportunity to put this justice right. So I wish to seek the opinion of the House. Hey, hey, hey. No, 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 she's, no, she's, she's called Noble Lord has said that he'd take it back. And, and it may well be that if he takes it back, oh, he's not, off. no, sorry, I, I had missed. He, he said he would take it back, but not with a view to bringing it back at third Go reading. For it. Go for Therefore, we, I do have to test the opinion of the House. Yeah, yeah. Question is amendment number one be agreed to. Where is that for say content? Content. content. Country not content. Not content. I think the contents of it. Content. 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 Question, the question will be decided by the division. I instruct the clerk to start the division. Is that open? Order. Members are now invited. Order! Order! Thank you. My Lords, the voting period is now open. Members are invited to record their votes using electronic voting system. Members will have 10 minutes to record their votes. I will make an announcement when the electronic voting period is cl closed. Clear the bar.
My Lord. Thank you. The electronic voting period is now finished. I will announce the result as soon as possible. My lords, they have voted contents 237, not contents 154, so the contents have it. Oh, yeah.
And clause 7, Amendment 2, Lord Russell of Liverpool. My Lords, I rise to uh, 